Have you ever thought about this? The hardest dollar to earn is the new dollar. And what I mean by new dollar is any category where you've never earned money before. So for example, if you've worked a corporate job for the last five years and you're going freelance, the hardest dollar to earn is gonna be that first freelance dollar. And when you go to YouTube or you go online, you're gonna see a lot of people say, make $10,000 a month doing X, Y, or Z. This video is gonna be a walkthrough of how to earn an additional $1,000 per month. That is the goal. You can, if you make more, great but we're gonna set a goal that's more reasonable, but actually really life-changing. And if we've never met before, my name is David and I've helped tons of digital entrepreneurs launch their business online with website design or to become designers. So there's a lot of experience here that I'm speaking from. In this video, I'm gonna give you the principles that you need to live by, whether you're starting a blog, you're becoming a freelancer, you wanna get a corporate job for the first time, whatever that might be, these three principles will guide you like I have never seen before to earn that first new dollar. Let's imagine that you are sitting with a friend and you're at a party, uh, let's say a wedding, the dance music is going, everybody's having a great time, you're sitting on the side with your friend, you're having a good conversation, you don't really wanna hit the dance floor. Sometimes in life we get put into these experiences or these moments where it's just uncomfortable. And maybe you could kinda of nod your head or move a little bit, do a little two-step on the side, but there is a big difference between being on the side and being on the middle of the dance floor. And what I wanna talk about here is that this process, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is be uncomfortable. Discomfort is gonna be probably the sign that you are actually going in the right direction to earn that first dollar. If you try to do everything in your comfort zone, you probably are not gonna go into new territory. It's a very basic principle. If you're comfortable with it, you'd already know how to do it. But the truth is, because it's new, it's gonna be uncomfortable. And so you have to step into some form of uncomfortable discomfort in this process to be able to really grow. This may be telling your friends and family that you're a website designer and you've never designed websites truly. You kind of know it, but like you've never really done it. You got to just get uncomfortable. Whatever you do, you got to step into something you never stepped into before. Often, and the principle here, right, is you're going to get into discomfort, but the true principle below that is that you need to bet on yourself. If you learn how to bet on yourself, like society didn't teach us this, schools didn't teach us this for the most part. You need to bet on yourself. And when you bet on yourself, it's risky. There's no backup plan. There's no guarantee. You have to believe that you are capable of achieving this goal and this task. And so in this first one, discomfort, you just gotta get uncomfortable. But the cool part is when you're in the middle of the dance floor having a good time, you're betting on yourself at the highest level. I'm telling you, you never regret those moments. You look back and regret the moments that you didn't bet on yourself. And so the first thing, get excited because right now you're gonna bet on yourself and you're gonna see yourself grow in ways you never imagined. And the cool part is once you do grow in this area, it does become comfortable. There's a quote that says this, fortune favors the bold. And in this moment, you gotta go forward. Don't wait for all the lights of life to be green before you start moving forward. You just have to take steps and move in the direction you want to go, even if you don't know what you're doing. When you start going in this process and you're stepping into something uncomfortable, the last thing you wanna do is do that task. And so you'll make up excuses, things will get in the way, you'll be too busy, every excuse in the book will come. And this is how I know when I'm living in excuse or if I'm living in reality of like, I'm actually going towards something. When I speak about the topic, hey, I'm gonna start a blog on this, or I started a blog on this, the way I know if I'm actually living in it is if I have this phrase attached to what I'm saying. So if I say something like this, yeah, I'm really planning on starting this blog. I've been thinking about it for the last six months, but I've just been too busy right now and I'm gonna start doing it maybe like a few months from now. The key word in that whole big phrase I just said is the word but. Everything after the word but 
is the true story that I'm living. So if I say I'm too busy, well, the reality is that that's the story I'm writing. I'm too busy to bet on myself. I'm too busy to do what I love. That's the reality that comes. And so the second principle is after you're uncomfortable, once you get into the zone of discomfort, you then need to step into being action oriented. Action oriented people make big decisions. And when you make big decisions, you make big moves. That is going to be the goal. Go for it. Don't consider, should I use this tool or this tool? Should I try to use this software or this software? If I'm going to launch a course, should I use this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool? All of that becomes nonsense. Just start. Just start and take action and go in the direction you want to go. I have a friend that I'm so proud of because he wanted to start a newsletter. He's working a corporate job and he had this moment where he was with his child leaving in the morning and his child was banging on the door for him to come back in. And it clicked for him that he needed to do something that gave him more freedom so that he could spend more time with his kids. You're going to be in discomfort and when you're in discomfort, you're going to need to be action oriented. The path of least resistance, the path that our bodies in like homeostasis want to take is not going to be action oriented. And how do you know you're action oriented? Well, if you are not making excuses, if you are making progress progressively on every part of what you're trying to do. So the way I do that is this such a simple principle and such a simple method. Always write down. Well, first of all, set time every single day to work on what you need to work on. Everybody has enough time. You don't need 30 hours a day. You need 30 minutes a day. That's literally all you need. Set aside 30 minutes every single day, no matter what that time is dedicated to this new project. But when you have that time set the night before, write down the one to three tasks that you're going to work on to push this idea forward. Then that day when you show up, you show up as the employee. You are not the manager. You're not making executive decisions. Oh, I think we should actually go with this tool versus this tool. No, yesterday you said you were going to set up an account with a specific tool as the manager and now you are the employee. Every time those 30 minutes show up, you are the employee. And so you show up for those 30 minutes and you get done what you need to get done. That's how you're going to be action oriented. That's how you're going to make progress on this because you don't know what's going to work. So at the end of the day, you just have to do your absolute best to try things out until something clicks. And that is the goal here. Discomfort, action oriented leads you to this place where you're putting out opportunities for you to actually get what you're looking for here, which is going to be that initial sale. Again, that first dollar is the hardest. So if you can get that first dollar, you are going to win. Now you're uncomfortable. You're taking action. But here is where I see a lot of people trip up because they just don't have the experience in betting on themselves where it leaves them in this room. I don't know why this happens. This is just something I literally do not understand, but I'm going to encourage you on how to crush it. Now we're going to talk about principle number three. When you make a purchase, if you are buying a book, let's say, and you could buy it from Barnes and Noble or Amazon and the price is exactly the same. What is the next major factor that you're going to consider as you make that purchase? It's going to be the speed of delivery. How quickly can you, that book get shipped and get sent to your house so that you could start reading it right away? And this is the hiccup. When you are providing value in society, when you start, you are at the bottom of the totem pole. In comparison to other people who could offer the same exact service, you are at the bottom of the totem pole. So one way you could differentiate yourself is by setting up a system that you respond ASAP to everything. It's not the most ideal situation, but when you're starting something new, it demands all your attention. You need to work quickly in the future. You may slow down the process or do it differently or whatever. But if somebody emails you and they're like interested in your web design services and you want to schedule a call, but your calendar says you're not available for two weeks, that is crazy. You are not really trying to win if that's how you're operating. You need to take some action, some push yourself in the right direction, get uncomfortable. But when you do that and you have opportunities show up, it's time to go all in. And so this is not the time to tell the client, I'll get back to you after the weekend. 
This is a time you get back to them immediately. You give them your phone number so they could text you. You let them call you, whatever it might be. Again, long-term, you might not necessarily want that type of relationship, but you'll do whatever you can to get back to them as soon as possible and with as much efficiency as possible because speed is a factor in this. If you have one person who says, I could get it done by Tuesday, and you have another person who says, I'll get it done in three weeks, and the price is relatively the same, I probably will go with the Tuesday, even if their design or their experience might not be at par with it, it might be worth it to me because I need it sooner. Often we're paying for things we need in the moment, right? So I would highly, highly recommend these three steps, discomfort, action, and speed. If you get these three things down, I'm telling you, before you know it, you're gonna have more business than you could handle, you're gonna be decisive, you're gonna be confident, you're gonna be engaged in every aspect of life, and you're gonna be able to earn that additional income. Now, you might be asking, where do I even start to find what I could even do? Try something. And this is maybe the bonus principle that I wanna outline. Commit to one thing. Do it for three months, do it for six months. Commit to it for a long enough period to see it through. I didn't land my first website project for the first nine months. And today I've done over a million dollars of business as a website developer. And I've spoken at Squarespace, I've traveled, I've done a ton in this world. And it started after nine months of trying. So do your best. I really believe three to six months is a great amount of time for you to really find your direction, put enough action behind it, put yourself out there in the world, plant enough seeds so that you can start to earn that additional income. If you want more content like this or have questions similar to this video, drop them down below, like the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.